So what I'm doing is a movie review. One of the videos that you guys requested out there for me to do is my film review. Basically reviewing different movies and things that I've seen. Um, and I approach it from a movie fan standpoint and also as an artist. I look at things critically. I can look at it from a writing standpoint, from someone who's worked in the industry as a filmmaker myself. So I have a lot of different input and different categories that this falls under. Even a bit of a, a film geek looking at some of the fan theories and different things that come up with some films. So today I'm reviewing the film Toy Story. Uh, more accurately, I'm going to be talking about the, the trilogy, the whole toy box uh, one, two, and three. Um, so talking a little bit about each of the films and my take on it and even now since it's been announced that they're doing a part four. Um, my thoughts on that and um, we'll get into a lot of the details. So let's jump in and we're going to talk about this film while I drive right now. So the first one is the classic, the iconic, the groundbreaking flagship installment from Pixar. Pixar's first full-length uh, feature animation. Actually the first fully computer animated film of all time. This one broke a lot of the standard conventions and archetypes of animation at the time. This came out in 95, so I was in high school and I had grown up kind of in the resurgence to the renaissance of animation, feature animation um, with Disney. And this kind of came with The Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin. This whole wave of traditionally animated feature films um, was kind of setting the tone throughout all a uh, film uh, of what animation was and was going to be. So Pixar kind of broke the mold. Not only was it completely CGI, computer generated images, it also, it wasn't musical and it really wasn't about a love story and a lot of the things that were kind of the staple of animation at the time. Pixar really carved a, a lane for themselves, remembering this is before they were bought by Disney. So they were their own studio at the time and the lane that they carved for themselves I believe was story first. They were focusing on creating a great story and building characters that you really could care about. They're very character driven um, storylines where you're invested in the characters and all the other things kind of were not the focus. The story was definitely king um, at Pixar. Toy Story 1 still holds up, still a great movie. The story never really gets old. Um, and surprisingly, for the most part, visually it still holds up fairly well. Obviously, there's some noticeable advances in lighting, textures, and a lot of the, the maps and things in the technology. Especially with organic characters like the humans and the dogs. Um, some of the characters back then look a little scary or even like freakish um, by today's standards. But by 95 standards, this was really a groundbreaking achievement in this film. Also as an artist, and an animator. Another thing that stands out to me is the eye blinking. I'm not sure what they were doing at the time, but Pixar was doing this thing where the characters would have alternating eye blinks so they didn't sync up completely at the same time. Um, so that in these scenes, it kind of looks weird. And with the eye blinking thing, I think probably a lot of people don't even notice it, but I remember it definitely bothered me at the time. Um, and seeing it later, it would kind of took me out of the, the story because it was very distracting. In later films, they remedied that issue and the characters definitely felt more alive. Toy Story 1, you can see they really raised the bar from what animation was previously and them breaking a lot of the animation, the, I guess the conventions of traditional animation at the time, there was a lot of great achievements that they had in Toy Story 1. This technique is going to probably revolutionize animation in the future and I think they're just almost nothing that they can't do well there's this gonna kind of it's, it's gonna be technology. another kind of i think there'll always be a room for traditional cell animation sure. but i think this is another way and it really looks great first time out of the box i mean i'm as excited about this picture as i was about who framed roger Rabbit in terms of developing new animation mm -hmm. some of the details that stood out it was pixar's first movie it was released in 1995 the first feature length entirely cgi animated film the artist put in about 800,000 of hours of work they achieved a lot of technological advancement without sacrificing the story and I think that was important. It wasn't just about it looking cool or being shiny and, and a new thing um, visually, but story-wise it was kind of a timeless story that people could relate to and that they really took their time in developing these characters that would last like over 20 years so far. 
I think one of the amazing achievements of the first Toy Story is that it's as much for adults as it was for children. And I don't even really see it as a kid's film. I don't see any of the Toy Story films as a kid's movie. Um, it just happens to be animated. Like Brad Bird says, animation isn't a genre, it's just the medium that something is delivered in. I think Brad Bird was saying just because it's animated doesn't mean it's really for kids. Um, it's really for everybody. Everybody can get something out of an animated film. And I think with every, with Toy Story, every new film that comes out, um, it's interesting because it grows with the kids and it's like for a new generation. So that's Toy Story 1. Moving on to Toy Story 2. Now I forgot if I, if I mentioned this before. Um, typically I do spoiler free movie reviews. This time, films have been out for like 10, 15 years. So if you haven't seen it by now, enter in at your own risk. Basically how I'm breaking these down is from different standpoints of story and visually and box office and a lot of details of production. So there are some plot spoilers and different things if you haven't seen them. Um, but I won't do that for part four because that's still fresh and it's still out in the theaters. Okay, so Toy Story 2. The original Toy Story will always be the classic that started it all. But four years later, in what was it 1999, after doing Bugs Life, Pixar released their first sequel film. And typically sequel films are not incredibly original. They just kind of rehash the same formula and it's kind of a money grab and even a lot of them go direct to DVD and direct to video and not meant for the theater. That's what Disney kind of did mostly at that time. And that's the interesting thing about Toy Story 2. Initially it was meant to just be a straight to video, direct to video release. But some way through production they decided to revamp things and make it an actual theatrical release. And I know that there was a, an issue where they lost a lot of files in production. A lot of the animated files and the, the hard drive, I think, got erased. And they ended up losing a lot of the content and having to reanimate and, and redo a lot of the, the content and the scenes. Um, and they had to rush it to get to the actual release date. But they did it. And this film was a rare occasion where the sequel was as good, if not better, than the original. In some instances, it's regarded as better than its predecessor. Um, and I think you don't really see that a ton. I think typically the classic film, the original part one of a series, is seen as the best film, and it's not really surpassed by any of the sequels. Um, a few film series that kind of have that, I think Empire um, is said to be greater and a better film than Star Wars uh, New Hope. The first one or episode four and uh, superman 2 a lot of people see that as better than the original superman godfather 2 better than the original godfather dark knight was seen as superior to batman begins so toy story 2 was in that category with a lot of people and a lot of cri uh, a lot of critics at the time it did pull in 50 million more than toy story 1 in the box office which i think got 247 million um, i think it achieved this by not just rehashing the same story or template. They brought back the characters that we knew and that we loved, but they also brought in new characters and relatable conflicts. And they turned the tables on a few of the story dynamics, I think with Buzz and Woody. And they f Buzz was very much featured in the first Toy Story and now Woody was more featured in part two. Also, they really tugged at the audience's heartstrings in this film in a way that you didn't really see in, in this type of animation before. Um, I think the scene with Jessie and her former owner, Emily. Almost every time I watch that scene, uh, it definitely makes me tear up. The, as soon as that Sarah McLaughlin song comes on, it really gets me. I'm sure everyone out there can relate. Side note, Jessie's former owner, Emily, uh, there is a fan theory around, uh, floating around that kind of makes a lot of sense. It makes the correlation that the way it's set up visually with the timeline of when um, Jesse was owned by Emily and the hat that Emily is wearing and, and all those things that they make a they have a theory that Jesse's owner who grows up and leaves Jesse behind is actually Andy's mom and there were some things passed down to him and the timing of when she was a kid and different things kind of match up with her no way to confirm that but little fan theories like that sometimes are kind of interesting to kind of just theorize and uh, wonder if they were thinking that when they were making these films Another fan theory was about Andy's father, because we never see him in the movies. Um, there's a couple scenes where there's a picture on the wall where people think it's Andy, but it's actually an older picture and it, the kid has glasses on. So they're thinking that that is actually Andy's dad. And there's theories about Andy's father passing away before Toy Story 1 happens. And that's why the mother moves on and sells the house. And they, they kind of want to get out of that place. And if you look at 
Andy's name on Woody's foot, it's a different handwriting than Andy's name on Buzz's foot. So they're thinking that maybe it's like the father's name was Andy and, and Woody is his father's toy that was passed on to Andy Jr. Andy's name on Buzz is the junior, his handwriting. So there's a lot of theories like that with, with um, different characters. And another thing that I find is really interesting, totally, you can't really prove a lot of these theories, but it's really interesting to kind of look at the stories and see how things fit together, if they do. So that's it with Toy Story 2. Now we go to Toy Story 3. So Toy Story 3 was released in 2010. I remember at the time hearing about it coming out, I was like, it had been like 11 years since Toy Story 2 was released and didn't really see this on the radar anywhere that they were going to make another Toy Story film. And I was really happy that they did because I think what they were able to achieve was similar to what they did with Toy Story 2 is they had a completely unique story, a great storyline and a plot and development and introduction of new characters that they, they really had a balance of, you remember these old nostalgic characters that you grew up with, and here are some new characters, but it, nothing really felt, seemed forced. It, it was an interesting blend of a very action-y and suspenseful film, maybe too intense for some little kids, but kind of seemed more even like a prison break film with a lot of high anxiety scenes in the end, I guess. Spoiler alert, this, I'll be talking a little bit about the end sequences if you haven't seen this film yet. So the last scene with the incinerator, it definitely reminded me of a throwback to The Brave Little Toaster, which was another film that was kind of geared at kids, but was very dark and heavy in looking back at it as an adult, where you were honestly concerned for the characters. And like in Toy Story 3, there is a moment where I thought it might go really dark and this would be the end of the franchise where all the characters actually get burned in the incinerator. So thankfully they didn't do that. <laughs> so they rescued them. And I think this film rivals Toy Story 2 definitely with the emotional goodbyes and the impact of basically closing out Andy's storyline with Andy saying goodbye to his toys. That farewell with Woody and handing him off to Bonnie. I don't know, it's hard to watch that and not feel like the past 10, 15 years of your life, you kind of see it as a closing of a chapter, as if these were real people and real instances that were actually happening in real life. And that's a testament to the storytellers, the, the writers and directors at Pixar that really crafted a story and developed these character dynamics and relationships that you really care for them. So uh, Jesse's flashback in Toy Story 2 was really emotional and Andy's goodbye scene in Toy Story 3 was also very emotional. And I think looking at Toy Story 3, it was kind of the perfect cap to the trilogy, or at least at least I thought at the time now that they announced that there is a fourth installment. And, and Toy Story 3 was wildly successful, even more so than either of the two first Toy Story films. The box office, I think it grossed 415 million at the box office, more than Toy Story 1 and 2 combined. One more thing that I noticed about Toy Story that it's kind of interesting because I never really would have thought of this until I, I was listening to a sermon, um, it was like a, a devotional series, but actually the book of Revelation. The pastor did an interesting study on how when we receive Christ that there is a, a major thing that happens in our lives about identity and belonging and he compared it to Toy Story in a, in a really interesting way that I never heard before, but ever since I heard it, it was definitely something that stood out to me. And, and being a, a Christian, um, a lot of people see that in my other videos where I talk about apologetics or faith or different traditions, debunking certain things or confirming certain things about the Bible and just traditions in general. But watching Toy Story after I had heard this makes a lot of sense to me. And I don't know if other people will get it, but I did. I thought it was really interesting, so I wanted to share it. Uh, he makes the comparison that to understand what Woody and Buzz and any of the characters are really going through in their relationship with Andy is that when he's writing his name on their feet, it's, it's kind of comparable to when we receive Christ and he writes his name on our hearts. It's an interesting thing where they, their identity is wrapped up in them belonging to Andy and like their lives are like, I have value because I belong to Andy. I'm one of Andy's children or um, toys. And I thought that was really interesting with thinking about as a believer, that's kind of how we relate to Jesus, where being associated with him or being his, he's like written his name on us. And and we have like a belonging, we have a, a relationship that's like our whole identity is wrapped up into being Christ. And, and I thought that was really interesting because they do point to how big of a deal it was to Buzz and Woody when they finally had his name, Andy's name on, on their feet. And I think that was really interesting to say like, oh, this is, this is who I belong to. 
And I think that's a great comparison to, as, as believers, how we relate to Jesus. And I just wanted to share that. That's a little small little snippet of something that I've heard that really does help me see these films kind of in a, in a different way. And I thought that was really cool. Okay, so looking back at these three films, I was going to break it down to analyze each of the three and compare them, like which one was the greatest and which had the most emotional scenes and all that. But now that there's part four, and I just saw that at the theater, I guess I'll compare all four. If anyone has seen the films, what do you think about the fourth film and how it fits in with the trilogy? I'm going to do a rating at the end, the very end of this video, uh, where I kind of rate in order which ones I preferred or which ones I like the best. For me, Four was also very emotional, and I'll get into that a little bit with the review. So I wanted to ask that question, like, which was your favorite Toy Story film? Was it one? Was it two? Was it three? Or was it four? Um, leave your comments down below. Let me know what you guys think. Also, which film made you the most emotional? Or which one uh, wrecked you the most sitting in the theater? Was it Toy Story? Toy Story 1 didn't have a lot of emotional draw to it, but definitely 2 did with Jesse. 3 did with Andy and four did with one of the characters and I won't say because a lot of people haven't seen it yet. So if you have um, a film that has impacted you most or caused the most emotional scars <laughs> on you, um, which one was it? Was it two, three, four? Uh, let me know down in the comments below. And um, like I mentioned, now I'm gonna get into the, the review of part four, the spoiler free review of part four, and also some of the, a little bonus at the end for you guys, some alternative designs that I had been doing and working on of Buzz and Woody that I think you guys would really like. Drawing, I wanted to draw them in a completely different style than what people are familiar with and, and something that kind of was more along the lines of how I design characters. So if you like those, wait till the end and let me know what you guys think of that in the comments. Leave a thumbs up, share it, like it if you do like it. <laughs> All right, so that looks like that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I'm trying to stay safe out here on these streets. Um, hope you guys enjoy the video. Make sure you leave comments, likes, thumbs up. If you guys like it, don't forget to subscribe. If you like these videos, check out other ones on my channel as well. I uh, will see you guys later. Okay, so we just got out of the movies, saw uh, Toy Story 4. It was really good. Uh, movie with this guy. This isn't mine. This is Petra. I don't have a, a Woody doll, but... The movie was really good. It was actually, there was no short with this one. So I think Pixar's only done it like three other times where he didn't have a short and I made a film to accompany it. So that was a little different, but they did have a scene at the end where they were a little extra thing at the credit to have a, another little bonus thing. And at the very end of the credits, there's another thing um, if you guys care to stay and watch for that. But with the movie started really kind of similar to Up where it's very emotional in the beginning. Um, they have like a flashback scene and there's some really um, surprisingly emotional um, highs and lows in this movie. And I think with Toy Story 2, I think it was one of the more emotional ones with Jesse scene. Toy Story 3 with the end with Andy. But this one had way more. <laughs> My eyes got more than just a little misty um, at times. There really wasn't a lot of dry eyes in the theater. A lot of people I could see around me were crying and there's several scenes in the movie that elicit a lot of the tears. So, not really giving any spoilers, but it's really good to rate it among the all the Toy Stories. It's hard because it's so fresh in my head, but I would say this one probably rates at one of the top two. It's, it's tough because the first one was a classic, and then the second one was like one of the best part two sequels at the time, and the third one was surprisingly emotional, and the, 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 I guess closing the, the story, the chapter with Andy. And then this one, it brings up a whole nother storyline that they're closing off to. I think I'd have to say this one would be top two, but I'm not sure where to rate it overall. see what the reviews are and if you guys like these the insight and all this and here's the, the little baby so she really liked it she's taking her woody doll back and there you go there's the baby all right 
That's it. Like it? Oh my gosh. It can talk. Oh my gosh.